Hello everyone, here we are going to discuss a new series of lecture which is going to be on the chemistry of dilute solutions and under this topic the main thing is the colligative property and today's subtopic is firstly the definition and type of colligative property but before that we should have some idea about the methods of determining the concentrations of solution of a solution by different methods so we have to have some idea about molarity molality and mole fraction so let's begin our journey in lecture one with units to determine the concentration of solutions concentration of a solution can be determined by different methods some of which are mole fraction molarity molality okay these three things are very important here which will be utilized in uh, case of discussing colligative property but before that at the very beginning we should know what how to how to denote a solvent or how to denote a solute within a solution a solvent is always a species number one and the solution is always a species number two so all the parameters in case of a solvent should be given a suffix 1 and all the parameters in case of the solute should be given a suffix 2 such as the number of moles of the solute is N2 the number of moles of a solvent is N1 the mass of a solvent is W1 the mass of a solute is W2 so this way all the parameters should be given by the suffix 1 or 2 in order to denote whether it's about the solute or it's about the solvent now in case of a solution if n2 moles of the solute is dissolved in n1 moles of the solvent and the overall volume of the solution is v liter then what should be the mole fraction of the solvent as well as the solute within that solution this the mole fraction of the solvent it is denoted as x1 and it is the number of moles of the solvent divided by the number of moles of the solvent and solute together similarly that of the solute that is the mole fraction of the solute is denoted as x2 and its expression is the number of moles of the solute divided by the overall number of moles of the solute and solvent together so x1 is n1 by n1 plus n2 and x2 is n2 by n1 plus n2 and this mole fraction is definitely dimensionless because in the numerator you have mole and in the denominator you have mole again so they cancel each other and it remains one that means the quantity is dimensionless so mole fraction is dimensionless next is molarity molarity is denoted as capital letter m it is the number of moles of the solute dissolved in one liter solution here you know the volume of the solution you do not know the amount of the solvent and here one more thing you know along with the volume of the solution is the number of moles of the solute which is dissolved in that particular amount of solution or the particular volume of solution so molarity of a solution which is denoted as m is actually the ratio of number of moles of the solute dissolved and the volume of the solution the unit of number of moles of the solute is what it is mole and the unit of volume of the solution is liter so the unit of mole molarity is nothing but mole per liter what is the mathematical uh, expression the exact mathematical, mathematical expression is N2 by V where N2 is actually the number of moles of the solute dissolved and V is the volume of the solution so the volume of the solution has the expression which is uh, in liter and N2 is in mole so the overall unit of M is mole per liter now N2 has some further expression which is nothing but W2 by M2 okay w2 means the mass of the solute and m2 is the molar mass of the solute okay let's elaborate with an example where you have a glucose solution where 1.8 gram of glucose is dissolved now you know the molar mass of glucose which is 180 gram per mole okay 
So what is the value of N2? It is W2 by M2. So in place of W2, you put 1.8 gram and in, in place of M2, you, play, you put 180 gram per mole. So what is the result? The result is 10 to the power minus 2 mole. And in the denominator, in this equation, in place of V, you put just 1 liter. So overall, you get 10 to the power minus 2 mole per liter. So this is the molarity of the solution. And this way, you have to calculate the molarity of the solution. Now move on to the third process by which the concentration of a solution is measured. Here, you know the amount or mass of both the solvent and the solution. Okay. Here, the number of moles of the solute which is dissolved in 1 kilogram or 1000 gram of the solvent. This is the molality of a solution and it is denoted by small letter m. So this small letter m has the expression in the denom in the numerator. You should put the number of moles of the solute dissolved and in the denominator you have to put the mass of the solvent in kilogram. Or in gram also you can put this but in that case the mathematical expression should be a little bit different and here is the mathematical expression if you express m1 that is the mo molar mass of the solvent in the unit kilogram per mole that means if it is water then it is 0 0.018 kilogram per mole okay this way then the expression is small letter m is n2 by m1 n1 okay so this is mole this has the unit mole into N1 also has the unit mole and M1 capital letter M1 has the unit what kilogram per mole. So this mole and this mole are cancelled by each other whereas this kilogram per mole has become mole per kilogram because it is in the denominator. So when this is rearranged this thing it will come. Uh, to the numerator as mole per kilogram. So the unit of molality is mole per kg. Now if you express M1 that is the molar mass of the solvent in the unit gram per mole then you have to multiply 1000 in the numerator because M1 kilogram is nothing but 1000 gram isn't it. So here you have divided this M1 with 1000. So this 1000 would go to the numerator in this equation. So simply if it is water 0 0.0188 then if it is 18 then you must have to put 1000 in the numerator in order to make this 18 as 0 0.018 isn't it. So this expression of molality should have in the right hand side 1000 n2 divided by capital letter N M1 into N1. So M1 has two types of expressions one in the SI unit one in another in the CGS unit. If you express M in the SI unit then the expression of molality is N2 by M1 N1 and if you express M1 in CGS unit then the expression of molality is 1000 N2 by M1 N1. Now if W2 kilogram of solute is dissolved in W1 kilogram of solvent that means if you express them in, ter them in terms of their masses respectively provided that the molar mass of the solute is M2 then M has a further expression which is W2 by M2 divided by W1 isn't it because here W2 by M2 is the number of mole of the solute this is N2. And W1 is nothing but M1 N1. This M1 N1 is nothing but W1 because W1 by M1 is N1. So W1 must be equal to M1 into N1. So this is another expression. Here also it will give the unit mole per kg. And if you express these units in terms of uh, gram or in the CGS unit, then also you can do the same, but you have to in, in that case multiply 1000. So the expression would become 1000 W2 by 
m2 divided by w1 so the expression is finally 1000 w2 divided by w1 m2 okay so if you express this w m2 and w1 in the si unit then the expression of small letter m is w2 by w1 m2 and if the expressions are in the serious unit then the expression of small letter m that is molality is 1000 w2 divided by w1 m2 i think it's clear to all of you now relationship between molarity and molality okay this is very important suppose you have a solution which has molarity in the unit in molarity unit which has concentration capital letter m mole per liter and in the molality it has the unit in the molarity unit it has the concentration small letter m mole per kilogram okay one thing extra you would require here with the help of a pycnometer you have to find out the density of the solution so you have to measure this practically so the density of the solution is d gram per cc okay and the molar mass of the solute is m2 and the unit is in the gram per mole unit it's in the cgc unit okay so what should be the overall mass of the solution if it is having one liter of volume so it is d gram per cc isn't it so for one gram it has the for one cc it has the mass d gram so so for thousand cc it should have the mass thousand into d gram so one liter solution which has actually volume 1000 cc or 1000 milliliter it should have overall volume overall mass 1000 d gram now from this 1000 d gram this is the mass of the solution you have to subtract the mass of the solute so what is the mass of the solute mass of the solute which is dissolved in the solution is capital m into capital m2 what is capital m capital m is the molar molarity of the solution whereas capital m2 is the molar mass of the solute so if it is one mole then m2 gram is dissolved if it is two mole then twice m2 gram is dissolved so if it is m mole then m into m2 gram is dissolved so this is actually the mass of the solute so this mass of the solute if you subtract this from this mass then you will get the mass of the solvent so the mass of the solvent in one liter solution is 1000 d minus m into m2 gram okay and this gram may be converted into kilogram if you divide this whole amount by 1000 so in the kilogram unit the mass of the solvent within the solution is 1000 d minus capital m capital m2 divided by 1000 kilogram so you have got the mass of the solvent in the si unit okay so what is the molality of the solution the molality of the solution you know that it is the number of moles of the solute dissolved divided by the mass of the solvent in kilogram so the mass of the solvent in kilogram has been obtained here this is this amount 1000 d minus m m2 by 1000 and the number of moles of the solute this is nothing but m here this m is number of moles of the solute so it is m divided by the mass of the solvent in kilogram so the mass of the solvent in kilogram is given here 1000 d minus m m2 by 1000 and the number of moles of the solute is capital m so finally the unit of this molality is mole per kg okay so this is the expression of small letter m now rearrange this equation you will get the expression small letter m equals to thousand capital m divided by thousand d minus capital m capital m2 so this is the x this is the relationship between molality and molarity so let's block this equation next so advantages of molality over molarity so from the from our previous discussion you may come to a conclusion that molality should have some advantage over molarity why there are two reasons one is in case of molarity 
you do not know the amount of the solvent while in case of molality you know the mass of the solvent as well as the mass of the solute so number one for a solution having its concentration expressed in molarity molality the amount of both the solvent and the solute can be known but for a molar solution only the amount of the solute can be known that means you do not know the amount of the solvent and there is a second reason which is the volume factor so you know that volume changes with respect to temperature so if you increase the temperature then the volume increases so the molarity would change so with change in temperature molarity also changes because it actually depends on volume of the solution but molarity doesn't depend on the volume of the solution because it is actually uh, dependent on the mass of solute and the solvent so molality remains constant with changing temperature as it depends only on mass of the solvent okay so these two are the advantages of molality over molarity now the main thing of the chapter which is actually the number of particles if you are going to learn colligative property then you must have to have some idea about number of particles within a solution you dissolve the solute within the solution but you do not know exactly what is the exact number of the particles because colligative property is such a property which is only dependent upon the number of particles of the solution so how to calculate the number of particles within a solution if the solute is a non electrolyte then the number of particles is the total number of molecules so how to calculate the total of number of molecules let's elaborate this with an example so the same glucose solution 10 to the minus 2 moles glucose solution which has uh, 1.8 gram of glucose dissolved in 1 mole uh, 1 liter of solution so it should have Avogadro number into 10 to the power minus 2 number of molecules and none of them has neither associated nor dissociated so the exact number of molecules is the number of particles okay so it is Avogadro number into molarity of the solution or number of moles of the solution this is for a non-electrolytic solute but if it is if it is an electrolyte suppose it's a salt such as sodium chloride sulfuric acid whatever then we have to count the number of particles by the number of ions which are obtained after dissociation so here in this case the number of particles is actually the total number of free ions okay so if you have 0 0.98 gram of sulfuric acid that means 10 to the power minus 2 moles of sulfuric acid then Avogadro number into molarity or the number of moles into 3 because sulfuric acid when dis when dissociates it produces two h plus ions and one so 4 2 minus ion so it produces three independent free ions so that is why three has to be multiplied so the overall number of particles is actually thrice than expected if the substance associates such as um, for acetic acid we shall uh, see that in case of elaboration so in that case what happens the number of particles should be the total number of associated species okay you take 0 0.6 gram of acetic acid that means you have taken 0 10 to the power minus 2 moles of acetic acid so it should have n0 into 10 to the minus 2 number of particles but in general 2 moles of acetic acid get associated to form a dimer okay that is why actually the exact number should be multiplied by half or 0 0.5 so n0 into 10 to the power minus 2 into half number of particles is the overall number of particles because two acetic acid molecules associate to form a dimer via intermolecular hydrogen bonding when dissolved in water and this is the picture two mol two molecules of acetic acid get associated via this hydrogen bonding and they form a dimer 
that means two molecules of acetic acid is equal to equivalent to one particle so n0 into 10 to minus 2 number of molecules of acetic acid is equivalent to n0 into 10 to minus 2 into half number of uh, particles so this way we have to calculate the exact number of particles because colligative property is such a property which depends only on the number of particles dissolved within a solution so after that we shall start the main topic which is known as the colligative property but before that you uh, have to deal with some numerical problems problem number one you have to arrange the solutions of glucose sulfuric acid and acetic acid each having same concentration and here in the example we are taking in all the cases 10 to the power minus 2 moles of glucose 10 to the minus 2 moles of sulfuric acid and the same amount of acetic acid okay so you have three solutions so you have to arrange them in the uh, increasing order or in the uh, ascending order okay so say c is the concentration of each solution okay c is the concentration here in in our previous case the concentration was 10 to the minus 2 mole but in general you have to take this as C. So for glucose it neither associates nor dissociates. So what is the number of particle? It is C into N0 into 1. That means 1 is due to no association or no dissociation. For sulfuric acid it dissociates into 3 ions to produce 3 ions. Okay. So you have to multiply 3 with C into N0. And in case of acetic acid, two molecules associate to form a dimer. So you have to multiply here half. So the number of particles is C into N0 into half. So what is the lowest number of particles? Where is the lowest number of particles? The lowest number of particles are present in the acetic acid solution. And the highest number of particles is present in the sulfuric acid solution. So the arrangement in the increasing order is acetic acid less than glucose less than sulfuric acid okay and here in another problem if you are said that 100 gram of glucose is dissolved in one liter water and in another solution 100 gram of sucrose is dissolved in one liter solution then which solution would contain more number of particles let us try to calculate the molar of mass of glucose is 180 gram per mole and molar mass of sucrose is 342 gram per mole. So what is the number of moles in case of 100 gram of glucose? It is 100 by 180. So it is 0 0.56 mole. And in case of sucrose, it is 100 by 342 mole. It is actually 0 0.29 mole. So which one is greater? Actually glucose is greater in number of mole this, from this perspective. So it should have more number of particles dissolved in the solution. So glucose has contains more number of particles than that of the sucrose solution now let's start definition of colligative property so as i've said a colligative property of a solution is one which depends only on the number of particles present in the solution and not in any way on the nature of the particles okay so that is why we have discussed we have given uh, um, emphasis on the number of particles present in the solution there are four types of colligative properties these are the relative lowering of vapor pressure the elevation of boiling point or ebullioscopy the depression of freezing point or cryoscopy and finally osmotic pressure okay vapor pressure is not colligative property lowering of vapor pressure due to dissolution of solute is colligative property Boiling point is not a colligative property. Elevation of boiling point due to dissolution of some solute is colligative property. Freezing point is not at all a colligative property. Colligative property is actually depression of freezing point. Why this depression takes place? Now some solute is dissolved within a solution. And finally, osmosis. This is not a colligative property. Actually colligative property is osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure is created due to dissolution of solid particles within the solution. But all these things are dilute solutions. 
that is why it is the chemistry of dilute solutions okay so here we conclude our first lecture of this lecture series so in our second lecture series we shall start from relative lowering of paper pressure so till then thank you goodbye and have a nice day